So what exactly is a force? What do forces do? How do they work? Well, let's talk about it. So what is a force? A force, by definition, is a push or pull action. So imagine if you have a block across a horizontal surface. And let's say this block is at rest. You can apply a force by pushing the block. So in that case, that's a push action. Another way in which you could apply a force on this block is through a pulling action. Let's say if you attach it to a rope and you pull it to the right. Well, this type of force is known as a tension force. Any force acting through a rope is a tension force. But that's the basic idea behind a force. It's a push or a pull action. Now, forces, they're vector quantities. A force is not a scalar quantity. A force has both magnitude and direction, so that makes them a vector. For instance, you can apply a force of 100 newtons east. You can also apply a force of, let's say, 50 newtons north. The 50 newton part, that is the magnitude. That's the size of the force. It tells you how small or how big the force is. North or east, that's the direction of the force. It tells you where the force is going, where it's being directed along. So anytime you have a quantity that has magnitude and direction, what you have is a vector. So force is a vector. And like any vectors, they can be added, they can be subtracted, and so forth. Now, what can forces do? Forces, they can affect the speed of an object. They can cause it to speed up. They can cause an object to slow down. They can cause an object to change direction. They can cause an object to change shape, change size. If you apply a force, you can squeeze and crumple paper. So you can change the shape of paper by applying force. But forces can also transfer energy. But let's talk about how they could uh, change speed. Whenever the velocity and the force vectors are in the same direction, the object is going to speed up. When the velocity and force vectors are in opposite directions, the object slows down. When the velocity and force vectors are perpendicular to each other, the object is going to turn. In other words, it's going to change direction. So those are some ways in which a force can affect an object. It can speed up an object, it can slow it down, it can cause it to change direction. So for this example, the block was at rest, but now a force is being applied, which will push it to the right. So it's going to accelerate, which means it's going to acquire some velocity. But if we continue to apply that horizontal force to the right, the block is going to speed up. Its kinetic energy will be increased. So notice what's happening here. This force is increasing the kinetic energy of that block. Before it was at rest, which means that it had no kinetic energy. But once it begins to accelerate and move, the kinetic energy goes up. And because it's speeding up, because the velocity is changing, that means that there's an acceleration on that block. According to Newton's second law, the net force acting on an object is equal to the mass times acceleration. So once we apply a force on this object, and let's assume there's no friction, this object will begin to accelerate. And whenever there's an acceleration, there's a change in velocity. If the acceleration is positive, the velocity will increase. If the acceleration is negative, the velocity will decrease. So once we apply a force, it causes the object to accelerate, the velocity increases, the object speeds up.
and whenever you increase the velocity you increase the kinetic energy so what this force is doing this force is by pushing the object to the right it's transferring energy to this object and that's what forces do they transfer energy to an object that's how that's how energy is transferred it's by means of forces the work done by this force is equal to the force times the displacement of this object the work done is also equal to the change in kinetic energy so it's equal to the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy so forces can do a lot of things they could change the speed of an object they could change its direction they could transfer energy to an object here's another example of that so let's say we have a frictionless horizontal surface and we have block one which is moving to the right at some speed v and let's say block two is at rest so its initial speed is zero as block one moves to the right it's going to collide with block two and both of them will move to the right as one unit now let's say block one has a speed of 10 meters per second after the collision they may move together with a speed of 5 meters per second if they have the same mass so notice that block 2 gained velocity or it gained speed block 1 it lost speed so block 2 gained kinetic energy block 1 lost kinetic energy because it's moving slower than it was previously so energy was transferred from block 1 to block 2 and that kinetic energy was transferred by means of forces block 1 exerted a force on block 2 when it striked it it pushed block 2 to the right as block 1 exerted a force on block 2 the speed of block 2 increased and therefore its kinetic energy increased so block 1 transferred energy to block 2 by means of an action force now according to Newton's third law by the way Newton's second law we talked about it already the net force is equal to mass times acceleration that's Newton's second law but now according to Newton's third law for every action force there is an equal but opposite reaction force so when block one exerts an action force on block two block two will exert an equal but opposite reaction force so the action force from block one on block two transfers energy to block two causing it to speed up causing its kinetic energy to increase the reaction force from block two exerted on block one causes block one to slow down it causes a decrease in the kinetic energy of block one and so that's what forces can do forces can transfer energy energy is transferred from one object to another by means of forces now let's talk about Newton's first law which relates to the law of inertia an object at rest will continue at rest and an object in motion will continue in motion unless acted on by a force now this object which was initially at rest if we didn't apply any forces on it it will remain at rest but once we applied a force it was no longer at rest it began to go in motion so that's the basic idea behind Newton's first law it's the law of inertia inertia is the tendency of an object to resist changes in its motion now let's say if we have a block moving at five meters per second to the right and across a frictionless surface if there's no friction this block will move on forever along the surface in reality we know that doesn't happen because friction slows it down but let's extend this let's say at this point the block encounters significant friction here but there's virtually no friction here once the block reaches this point here friction is going to oppose the block and because friction is opposing 
the motion of the block because the velocity and friction vectors are opposite to each other. Friction is going to slow this thing down. So friction being a force acting on this object, it's decreasing the kinetic energy of this object. Energy is being transferred from the block to this surface in the form of thermal energy. So that's where the energy is going. And when the velocity and force vectors are opposite to each other, the object is going to slow down. It's going to lose kinetic energy. That energy is transferred as heat energy. So that's another way in which a force can act on an object. It can slow it down. Now you have different types of forces. So this is what is known as a contact force. In order to push the block, you need to make contact with it. That is a short range force. Now you also have other types of forces. You have long range forces. These are non-contact forces. So imagine if you have a ball above the ground. Gravity is going to bring this down. So this ball is going to have a weight force. That's a long range force. It's a non-contact force. Anytime you have two objects, you're going to have a gravitational force between them. Think of the Earth and the Moon. The Moon exerts a gravitational force on the Earth, pulling the Earth towards the Moon, and the Earth exerts a gravitational force on the Moon. So these are action-reaction pairs. So any object above the surface of the Earth is going to feel Earth's gravity. But it's a long-range force because you don't have to be in contact with the Earth to experience this force. The moon has not touched the Earth yet. It feels the force of gravity from the Earth on the moon. So that's an example of a long range force. Here's another example. Let's say if you have two positive charges next to each other, but they're not touching. Like charges that repel each other. So this is an electrostatic force. As you can see, it's a non-contact force. The two positive charges, they don't need to be touching each other, and they could still exert a force on each other, even from a distance. So that's a long range force. Another example is the magnetic force. Let's say if you have two bar magnets, that's the North Pole, that's the South Pole. The North Pole of one magnet is attracted to the South Pole of the other. So this is a force of attraction. This is a force of repulsion. So the magnetic force is another long range non-contact force as well. Now, how far the range will extend depends on the strength of the magnetic field. But these forces can exert an effect on each other from a distance. So that's basically it for this video. Hopefully gave you a good idea in terms of what is a force and how forces work. So remember forces are, is any push or pull action that can act on an object. By the way, for those of you who want example problems on forces, along with the calculations, feel free to check out the links in the description section below.